Hi, this is Manjula Narayan, books editor, Hindustan Times, and today I have with me Yashika Dutt, who's written coming out as a Dalit, a memoir, and it is absolutely very gripping and very well written. So, Yashika, tell me, uh, you said it took you three years to write this, but um, I mean, you've spoken about uh, uh, you know the the spark that first led you to write it. You know, and the the Facebook post you wrote, and let's go over that just uh, you know for the viewers. What made you write this book? You know, coming out as a Dalit, a memoir, and I know that you've worked at Hindustan Times, and well, one likes to think that people don't uh, don't think about caste, but we all know that they do, and um, you very effectively passed. You know, yeah. So and you 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 speak you write. You know very well about that process, and which is what I found very interesting about the book. So you know, talk about what started you off. Yeah. So uh, when I was working with HT, I started here in two thousand eleven, and I came in as a fashion writer, and it was a safe space. It was a safe world because fashion is a is a kind of it's an industry where nobody thinks you can be Dalit and write about fashion because it's inaccessible. It's it's. um you know if i'm being candid it's it's a classist and it's mostly upper caste we don't have that many dalit designers so to speak if you want to be in the world of fashion you need to have money which is a given and not many people talk about that so when i was writing for fashion and with ht nobody even thought it didn't even occur to anybody that this person is anything but a rich urban middle class upper caste person so which is why it helped me so effectively and um and that that was one of the things that made me think in a different direction that made me realize that i wanted to write about ideas that didn't need that accessibility with a class or a caste badge and we were critiquing them that didn't make a lot of sense so i started searching for ideas that moved away from fashion and then i applied to columbia and i think it was the best decision i could made i didn't think in ways that i do now and columbia helped me with that especially understanding about systems of oppression and how uh caste race class these are not just ideas they are proper systems and that's how the world and society functions especially india so i kind of had an awakening in the classroom and i felt that the life that i'd been living so far which was being dalit but pretending really hard to be upper caste there was something fundamentally wrong with the idea and the fact that i had to lie that the fact that i had to pass to be an upper caste person wasn't correct and it wasn't my fault it wasn't my shame to bear it was not something that i had to be worried about but i was and when i realized that truth um it just became really clear to me that i have nothing to be embarrassed about being dalit except that i was in the us so it it also didn't matter as much because i was living in new york i was not being asked what my caste was every second day which when i was in delhi not in office of course and not in urban spaces but on the road trying to find um a landlord or trying to find a house for example or even basic things just standing next to somebody in a queue and they start talking to you and the second question they're going to ask is what's your caste really that happened to me a lot a lot and and um when i was younger what your caste like that they used to say beta ki caste kya hai aise punjabi ho gaye aap to aap dat likhte ho so they're not pointedly asking what your caste is but they round about the question is you're dat but are you bengali and i had no real answer i was like yeah i mean i'm not bengali but i do write that and there's a reason because it's not it's not a real caste name and i was like yeah i'm bengali but i don't speak bengali and i had all these i had this treasure trove of lies that i pulled out depending on what the situation was when this question was asked and when i moved to the us um i didn't have to answer that anymore and at the same time i was going through this realization this awakening that there's nothing wrong with uh, being dalit being untouchable that is not my fault and at that same time when i graduated and i heard about i've have extensively spoken about this when rohit passed away and he took his own life it was like a mirror to my life what it could have been 
Rohit Vemula. Rohit Vemula. Yes, Rohit Vemula. What my life could have been if I didn't have the relative privilege that I do. If if I wasn't born in a family which insisted on being educated and passing as upper caste above everything else. I was from a very young age my my parents told me that you have to speak really good English. You have to write really really well because only then people will stop questioning what your caste is they didn't but i was able to pass and in rohit's in rohit vemula's life i could see my own very easily if i didn't have those opportunities it could have been me i could have been that person so there were certain parallels that reached out to me except he was not trying to hide yes and he was openly living his truth he was fighting for it and he was proud and i didn't need to know his life story to even know that i just read his letter mm. i saw his facebook profile and i was like this is this guy he's so much younger than me he was 26 i was 30 at the time and he's out there with no fear with very little to to fall back on and here i am i had the opportunity to pass on my life to work in these great media houses to work at HT now i graduated from columbia which is from a really good course and what am i doing with this with all this privilege that i've accumulated how am i using that and and i thought that if this guy this this rohit vemula if he can do something at that level i certainly can i mean li- living in new york knowing everything that i do maybe i can make a difference So I decided to start uh, documents of Dalit discrimination because the more I read about his letter, what struck me was that he'd written in English, and I didn't know any Dalits who wrote in English till then. And of course, that's partly that was, my fault mm. because there are Dalits who've written in English extensively. I just wasn't aware. So I realized that there are other people like me. There are people like him. There are people like me who are. hiding their identities and living different lives in every newspaper in every media outlet boys what do dalits do they are unta- they they don't have talent they are not worthy of reservation they don't have merit and or they're very corrupt so and i realized that wasn't the entire story that was not the whole narrative there were people like me there were people like i had who had seen had grown up with in my family rohit other people that i knew of that was not our only story and nobody was talking about that story i wanted to do something because this this guy had given his life wanting to stand up for what he thought was right and the least i could do was do my job which was as a journalist bring those stories to the forefront but i realized i can't ask people to share their stories of being dalit unless i do my, that myself nobody knew i was dalit and i said if i want to ask people to share their ideas their stories i have to start with mine first and i felt scared i was sitting in this coffee shop in in new york in chelsea <clears throat> in this chair and i was like okay i think i can do this i'm far enough and i can I can tell my story to people. So I wrote this Facebook note where I talked about my grandfather learning to read and write by scrolling a stick in the mud and I was I was really excited once I decided that I wanted to do this. It was exciting because I could I couldn't imagine the reactions that would come out on Facebook. People would be shocked, scandalized. This person, they couldn't imagine. She's Dalit. She's untouchable. She does not fall in the, the image of what we think a Dalit to be. And I just really, at that point, I just wanted to see that reaction. I just wanted to see how people would react. How, what, what it would feel like, especially for somebody who really believes in caste. who believes that they are superior because they're born in a certain caste than untouchable people and somebody like me kind of tricked them and i was excited that, that this delicious possibility of having bested a caste this person you thought you were so superior you didn't even know i was you know friends with you maybe worked with you ate in the same ate around you you know and same utensils as you all all those biases that you had i managed to break them and here i am so you you couldn't uh 
it was not your choice. You couldn't out me, I'm outing myself. So at, at that point I felt really powerful and um, I published that note and I said this is it, everything's going to change from now on because everybody knows who I really am and it did. And as we know the, the note took a life of its own and I heard narratives where people were saying how is she Dalit and she went to Colombia? How did that happen? And what they didn't know was that Dr. B.R. Ambedkar yeah. <laughs> studied at Colombia <laughs> and, and finished several degrees from there. Okay, so you know, I mean, while I was reading the book, I was <coughs> thinking, my God, it must have been such a strain to constantly be, uh, you know, trying to pass for, you know, upper caste. What is powerful about the book is that it, even if the reader is not Dalit or doesn't come from, uh, you know, assumes that he or she lives in a caste-free world or comes from a you know a space which is caste free which you know increasingly everybody knows uh, doesn't exist you know in yeah. India yeah. you can fool yourself that it, it exists but it doesn't yeah. so it kind of holds up a mirror to other people who might not share your background as well about their own hypocrisies and their own blindnesses so you know how did you uh, I don't know how you achieved that this has been the single biggest most powerful narrative of my life where when I was younger my mom constantly said you have to be like them this is very important if you want to be successful if you don't want to be discriminated you have to learn how these people live and even then when I was very young there was a clear difference in how we lived even though uh, my father was probably <coughs> doing the same job as someone else who was upper caste. We were living in the same locality with other upper caste people. But there was a very clear difference in how our culture was and how the upper caste culture is. And I understood that I didn't have access to that. And the only way I could have access to uh, understanding how upper caste people live is either pretending to be upper caste or let's say joining a boarding school, which is why we grew up with a lot of economic hardship, but my mom insisted that you have to study in a good boarding school, not just a day school, a boarding school where you live with these girls and you, you see how they talk and what matters to them. For example, religion sometimes matters to them or certain traditions, especially in Rajasthan, the way of doing things. So these things um, mattered a lot because these little tricks and nuances would make my passing that much more effective. It would make the lie believable. And it was very easy for me to write that because this is what I've been doing all my life. Now it's very, I'm, I'm 33 years old and I've been out for the past three years and I, I'm very comfortable with who I am. But when I was younger, I wasn't. It was either, okay, let's not be that dark. And that, like that was something I could change. And I'm not dark. Yeah. Uh, but when I was younger, I was. And that was a constant source of anxiety for my mom that if you... Yes, the Uptan uh, chapter is very good. Is, this is what my mom thought upper caste people did every day. We didn't know, but <laughs> we assumed that all upper caste people bathe with Uptans. Because it's, or even if they don't, if we do, it's a sign that we are more upper caste than them. You know, if that makes sense. Mm. That we know so much that... We do it better than you. We are performing your role better than you are performing it. So nobody will ever question us. Mm. So it was one of those things, upturned sheets. Um, Nali, the cow. Oh, is that, that was <laughs> lovely, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was hilarious. When I was 11 years old, also my mom... sad because in the she end she lost she, the cow. She lost the cow, but it was when she was around, we had this brick red cow. She was called Lali. And my mom got her because she said all these brahmins have cows and dalits just don't have cows she said no but i'm going to get one and it doesn't matter if we live in this urban locality where you can't keep a cow we just keep her in a garage and the explanation was that the cow will be good for giving us milk and paneer and dahi and all of that but the real reason was that mom that was a final uh, one of the final steps towards being fully accultured into an upper caste world that, you know, you said we couldn't keep a cow, we're going to keep a cow. You said we couldn't read and study Sanskrit, we will. You said we couldn't speak in English, 
we're going to do it better than you do. So there were all these things that I was being taught when I was growing up, um, not just me, all my siblings, that these nuances, these tricks of what it means to be a Picasso, you have to do it better than most people do. And only then you stop being questioned. Mm. So whether it was getting cow, applying Optan, learning how to tuck your sheets, or um, having being the most fashionable person around, which is why I started writing about fashion, because that was another thing that you know Dalits are not. Who thinks of Dalits as fashionable? And my mom insisted that you have to be stylish, because that's what upper class people do. Your mom's a real character. <laughs> I mean, she's like such a strong. You know, her her will is so strong. Yeah. What's her reaction to the book? And she read the book. I I saw her when she picked it up. She couldn't put it down. She said, "I forgot that I was this person <laughs> that you've described me as. That you remember so vividly." Superwoman. She sounds like. I, mean, I see her like is, that. Yeah. yeah, and and she single-handedly pulled me and my siblings through poverty, through um, days when we didn't have food to eat, um, through. opposition to her two girls going to a good school so she she has been the greatest force around me in my life she shaped me in who i am mm. so initially when i started writing this book she was a little apprehensive but as i i was like well i'm going to do it and she said okay you know i'm proud of you go ahead not not when she read the book but when i came out and she said yeah i mean I think it's. I think you can uh, face the consequences, or if there are any that come, any negative consequences that come with writing this book, if they do come, I think you. I have raised you to be the kind of person who can face them, and also you don't live here, <laughs> so do what you want. Okay, what I found also great about the book was that uh, you know you've managed to kind of make it personal and political, which is. difficult somehow you've like you've managed to get you know the bigger picture of caste in india and of you know race politics in the international context and uh, all that you know discriminations at the micro and macro level political uh, you know acts J- uh, jignesh mewani and uh, you know rohit vemula everybody you've managed to get in all these strands as well and you know and therefore create a picture of contemporary india so talk about that um it just didn't make sense to me to talk about my own life and also being a dalit is not just my story the, the whole idea was to give a platform to stories like mine which is why i started documents of dalit discrimination the tumblr i talked about and then i got the opportunity to write this book and this book was always meant to be a vehicle to um shine light on those stories as well stories that we have ignored wittingly or unwittingly we have never talked about dalit culture or like the fact that there are so few dalit journalists etc etc so i wanted to create a bigger picture because i wanted this book to have the maximum impact it could i mean if i just wrote my story it would be a human story that many people have written about but uh, making it broad i think pulls in the idea that this is not just me it wasn't just a personal story the that caste as a system exists in india and with indians abroad so that's what i wanted to i wanted to create a universe that exists but somehow we never see it mm. i just wanted to peel off that for that film that that we have of 100 years hundreds of years actually thousands of years of not seeing caste waiters as sandpapered the edges and you know it, it's now firmly a part of the system that we live in it's so much a part of the system we don't see it exactly <laughs> it's it's invisible mm. so i wanted to peel that off and show that whatever you do say every choice that you make if you live in india it's guided by caste and for me to do that i couldn't do it with just my story i had to bring in rohit vemula story jignesh mewani um the story of what it means to be a dark skinned dalit woman versus somebody who looks like me 
uh, the story of um, education and reservation in universities and how uh, Dalit students are forced to commit suicide because they don't get enough support and how they're called meritless, talentless when they have fought against circumstances to be where they are and they deserve to be there. So I wanted to, I wanted to bring all of that in to create the world and to show it as it really is. My story was just the spine from mm. which everything else was supposed to flow out of. Okay, and uh, do you think that, you know, as we go forward, like the media in India is going to be more diverse? I, I think your book is remarkable is because still there are very few voices emerging from the uh, Indian English media, you know, which is, like you mentioned, largely, you know, dominated by the upper castes. From what I've seen, there are really talented writers in English media who are not scared anymore. I think a lot of us have been around for a long time, but we've been scared, people like me, who didn't want to talk about what a caste is or who didn't want to be labeled as a Dalit writer, which also tends to happen. There are people who are not scared. And that's, I think that's a significant difference from what I saw when I started writing. There was a reason why people were scared because they were worried that their careers would never take off. And stories like that exist. I've written about some of them. I'm not sure the kind of change this book will bring, but at least my coming out, I know for a fact, has allowed people to see Dalits in a different light. There is Dalit media. Why, why should we just limit ourselves to corporate upper caste media? And I'm calling it upper caste media because it is run by mostly upper caste people. Um, Dalit media is really powerful now, not just online, but we have our own media outlets. Um, there's RTI, which is doing such a good job and which is extremely relevant. And I see those publications coming to the top and getting started and people becoming really important and getting a, finding a voice there. So the idea is that Dalits find a voice that is so strong and so loud that it's impossible for people to ignore it. I think the idea is that this is, here we are, and if you don't pay attention to us right now, then you're losing out. And if there are a lot of us who believe that, I think there is a positive change on the horizon. So everybody go out and get this book. Coming out is Dalit, a memoir by Yashika Dutt. It is excellent reading and um, I'm sure, you know, um, it'll broaden your horizon and you'd also kind of enjoy it, which is a, a bit strange to say, but you will. So. I wanted you to be entertaining. Yeah. I wanted you to laugh. So Some points I did. Okay, <laughs> okay. I did okay thank job. you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Bye.